to Reading, Writing, and Rain. This is a podcast about books, writing, and my writer's journey. I am your host, Rain Coleman, and you can follow me on Twitter at Coleman Rain, Instagram at Reading, Writing, Rain, and on Goodreads. Um, when you're listening to this podcast, please, please, please feel free to use the hashtag RWRPod. Um, share your thoughts with me there. Let's make this a conversation. Um, also, the hashtag ReadingWritingRain spelled out if you like. And also, email me at ReadingWritingRain at gmail.com. You have a little bit more to say. You maybe got an audio file you want to share with me. Uh, you want to say a little bit more than what Twitter may allow. And yeah that (laughs) all right so this is the fourth installment first of all thank you all who have been listening there has been a bit of a gap here life has gotten in the way uh making me take a hiatus uh wasn't intentional i'm trying to get back on track um what i'll say is you can plan all day long for as long as is long but sometimes life has a way of shaking stuff up and uh, pulling you in different directions. And that's what's been going on with me. Um, so, yeah, sorry about the delay, but we are back on track. This is episode four. We're going to be discussing Preptober and NaNoWriMo. This is going to be more of a conversational episode. So... There's a project that I've been working on, which has been mentioned in the last few episodes, so please uh, check those first three out. And this project was intended to be complete and ready to put on the shelves, on the virtual shelves, by December 7th. Um, That has not been the case. Again, life, work, work work-life balance, personal life, family issues, and the like have gotten in the way. And that is not been my story so i'm going to pivot and that's something that i want to kind of bring up today and i'd like to get you all's opinion so i had a plan the plan was to get all this done so this book could be out by december and life happened life got in the way forced me to rearrange some things but because the content of the book is so it's it's a holiday novel and it was intended to release in december because in continuity of the book the book is set in 2021 going into the new year of 2022 and i really was beating myself up about not getting that story out edited complete and done now, there's still time, you know, at the time of this recording, I'm still working on it and I could possibly be done and have all that stuff rushed and whatnot and taken care of, rather not rushed. Um, but I also had to come to terms with the idea that it may not happen in the timeline that I've given myself. Now, I can work hard and I can probably get this out, but at the same time, I want to be comfortable and confident in the story that I've released. Um Let me know if you've had any issues or any familiar, not familiar, anything similar. Um, And it doesn't necessarily have to be about writing, but that would be preferred. Uh, And I I bring that up because a lot of times we do get in our own way. We are our worst critic. Uh, We are harder on ourselves than we are on other people. Um, I know that for me, there's a lot of authors and aspiring writers and whatnot who I follow, who I kind of, you know, support in, in one way or another. And I know for a fact, if any one of them was to say, hey, guys, I have a book that's supposed to be out in December, looking like my timeline is uh, going to be pressed back for a month or two, I apologize. I will give them so much grace. I'm like, all right, you know, whatever, you work hard. Shit, do what you need to do and release it when you can. But for the longest of time, I wasn't doing that for myself. And I am still not 100% comfortable with the idea that this book may come out after December. But I'm a much more comfortable with it now than I had been a week ago, a month ago, two months ago, last time I recorded. Um, because though there is so much time and it feels like there's so much time... To be quite honest, we're in the last quarter of 2021. We are moving swiftly into 2022. 
things are changing. The world itself is changing. Our day-to-day things are coming towards that end. When I say that end, just with it hitting into that holiday season, you know, the year seems to just fly by after, um, after Halloween, really. And I just either have to, no, let me not say this. I have to do better with, um, the way in which I manage my time. But even with that being said, and even with that being done, there's still a possibility that the timeline will not match up with what I had intended. So going forward, I'm going to push to try to get to that original timeline, but I'm not going to beat myself up if this book comes out later. So I was thinking like, okay, let's say a year from now, someone's reading the book and then they're like, oh, this came out in March of 2022. I don't want to read this shit. It, in the book, it's the Christmas of 2021. Why didn't this come out Christmas of 2021? Like, that's so ridiculous. Um, especially when there's so many holiday themed books that come out probably every month of the year or have come out in so many uh, different odd months or whatnot. So long story short, I'm learning to not be so hard on myself, especially with these self-imposed deadlines. I am not signed with um, a traditional publisher. I am self-publishing. I'm doing everything on my own, out of pocket, my own um, words. Everything is my own. I'm, I'm, my, I'm a one-man show. So with that in mind, and also having a life and having other responsibilities, I can't beat myself up. Now, I will say that though I do feel as if we are our worst critics and I shouldn't be so hard on myself, you also do not want to slip into this mode where that is your excuse to not do better. Uh, so in spite of everything that I've just said, I also understand that if this is something that you, you being me, that you want, then you need to make the necessary changes to your life and your schedule and the way you operate to make this come to fruition. So that being said, again, I may not make that December timeline, but going forward, it can't be, oh, I've stayed up and watched three extra episodes of something on Netflix, or I was on the phone a little bit longer, or, you know, I went out to eat. When time could have been set aside within just those three examples, that's a good three hours. Maybe not three hours on one day, but spread throughout the week or whatnot. I need to devote more time. I need to be more disciplined. So though everything I said initially I still stands true, still rings true, Let's not get into this habit of using a rolling timeline as an excuse to not do better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it there. So that's what I'm kind of dealing with in addition to setting aside time to get all of this done. So taking a few steps back. So Preptober, um, for those of you who don't know, has all, has been, and I don't know how long it's been this. I know uh, NaNoWriMo has been going on for 20 plus years. Now Preptober being the preparation month to prep to do your novel or your work in November. I'm not sure how long that's been around, but it is the month that writers have set aside to like do all of the technical behind the scenes work. So for example, you have a police procedural novel that you want to write in November. You would get some research down. Uh, Maybe you know your main character is um, Irish and from New York and their partner is African from Nigeria. Well, if you don't know about either of those identities you would spend November um I'm sorry October getting a little bit more information get a little bit more insight into uh how uh, police shit is set up in whatever city you set your story in how Irish people what is the history like how much do you need to know how much do you want to fold in same thing with Nigeria is there a certain dialect is there a certain color that's signature or important to these people and you know uh, being immigrants are these people first second third generation so I I hope that's a good enough example that October slash preptober is the month that you prepare And do all the work you can so that when November hits, you can go from November, the start of November to the end of November, and devote as much time to writing as possible. I have done my Preptober work already back in April when I initially uh, was going to do Camp NaNoWriMo. And Camp worked for me. I got a lot of stuff done. I got a lot of words on the page. But I did not finish. Again, life 
you know, life happened. And so going forward this November, I'm going to change things around a bit. Um, so with NaNoWriMo, you have to, or the goal is to complete your book and your book will be 50,000 words, or it could be more if that's what you want, but the goal is 50,000. So I think it's like, what is that? 1160 something, something amount of, of a day for me in this title that I'm working on, that I've been working on, I've decided not to focus on a 50,000 uh, word count, mainly because with this story, I'm not sure it's going to either be that much or if, it, or if it'll be more. And that's one thing that I've realized about myself is that that 50,000 word mark has been just as kind of stress inducing as the actual event so with me instead of me just like writing and trying to get as many words down or many chapters done if i'm working towards that goal specifically it's been like this big bad final boss that i'm just unable to reach whereas uh, my new approach is going to be finishing the book not look now i'll probably track some words just to like participate and have them on the page but i'm not going to be heartbroken if i either don't get to 50,000, but the book is complete, or if I get to more than 50,000 and the book isn't complete, or if I don't make 50,000, but I've been writing my ass off and I've made substantial amount of uh, leeway, headway with the book, with the work, then I'll be satisfied with that. I'm not going to beat myself up about the 50,000 because I've learned that that, I believe, is an issue for me. Now, this is all in theory. I feel as if that's an issue for me, so I'm going to try this out. And even if I don't win NaNoWriMo, that's, I'm not going to like fall apart behind it. Um, I'm learning. I'm, I'm growing. I'm wiser. <laughs> so I'm just trying to do a little bit better. Uh, but you guys let me know. Have you participated in Preptober? Are you planning on participating in NaNoWriMo? Um, what is... You know, you could let me know what is your what's your work about. Like, you know, if I don't, because what I what I plan on doing is being more focused on my writing for November, and being more active online on social media, mainly Twitter and some Instagram, and that is to immerse myself in writing, um, because my Twitter account is dedicated to writing into books, um. I'm going to spend time on there. So if you're there and you want to stop in and say, hey, you know, hope you're working, your your writing is going good. Here's how mine's going, whatever. Please, please, please follow me on Twitter. And that's Coleman Rain, at Coleman Rain. I would love to, you know, have a quick little conversation going, some back and forth. Um, I don't know that I've ever had like this huge community of people who are also writers. I've had people who was like supporting my my writing efforts and wanting to read what I've put on the paper and excited for me and rooting me on and stuff. But when it comes to having other writers who I'm like in a collective with or just spending time uh, discussing things, I haven't had that. Um, so if you want to, you know, do that, pop by the Twitter, say what's up. Let me know how many words you did that day. If there's any writing sprints you're going to, um, any live streams, do that. I'd like to know that as well. And yeah, because I just want to be a little bit more active. Um, the the Twitter, the social media side of like book, author, Twitter, Instagram is it's not new to me in the sense that I've used these platforms, but using them in a way that is solely focused on my writing is the thing that's new so i am admittedly a bit awkward with it uh i'm still getting my footing honestly i am um i'm all for that now one thing i want to ask of you all is if you know of any black booktubers author tubers who are doing nanowrimo things link them let me know you know send me a link um it could be through email, it could be on Twitter, it could be Instagram. And I ask that because I follow quite a few people online, uh, specifically YouTube. And when I search in, when I use the YouTube search engine to find 
NaNoWriMo or Preptober videos and information, I keep getting white women. Some of them are women who I already follow, so I get their information, whatever. But even when I put black, African-American, African, I'm still getting all these white women. So I'm thinking either there's not any there, which can't be the case, because I know of two young ladies who I know their names so I can type them in and find them. But then it's like, I don't, I mean, algorithms go algorithm, and we already know about digital racism, but at the same time, this is getting frustrating. I'm like, maybe it's user error. Maybe I'm doing something incorrect, but there's no way I should put African American Preptober 2021, Black Booktuber, Author Tuber, NaNoWriMo 2021, and still get the same blonde hair, blue eye results, which. Again, a lot of those women I follow already. I already like see their content. So what I'm looking, I don't know. It's it's a little it's a little frustrating for me. So let me know if like if I'm doing something wrong or if you just know of any black people who are doing Preptober and NaNoWriMo 2021 videos content. I would love to follow them. I would love to consume their media and support them because I'm like. Ugh. I want to see more of what we're doing. And even if it's not anything too different from what the other folks are doing, that's perfectly fine. But I would like to support, help those folks with their numbers. And if they're doing like writing sprints or whatnot, tuh, I want to hop on too. So that is my call to action for you guys. My plea for more black folks doing things. Um, <clears throat> so with this project... I've mentioned on the last few episodes, it is my holiday novel, Three Siblings Returning Home for the Holiday After Being in College for a Year, and how their past pretty much catches up with them, and it makes for a whirlwind of an experience. Um, I won't rehash that because, again, it is, I've gone into detail, I believe, in the last episode, episode three. Um, I do want to get this done. There are, I have two other manuscripts that are complete, complete in a sense that they have, they're like on a second draft and I need to go through the process of getting them edited, getting me beta readers and all that good stuff. But this story is the story that I want to finish and I want this out immediately. Like I love the idea of this story. Um, so I'm going to be working on that for November. I'm hoping to be done way before November is over. Like if I can get this done in the first two weeks, that would be ideal. Again, I'm not going to put a lot of pressure on myself. I will continue on for the entire month, but I want that done. I want it done. I want it complete because uh, I want to start making these moves. I really have... Um, I'm honestly excited to try to get the cover together because I have like three different ideas of what I'd like for the cover art to look like, uh, <laughs> so like, I don't know, that's what I'm excited for, even a little bit more than the story itself, because it uh, it would enhance the story, and whatever, they, they work together, the cover and the story, but oof, man, I am, I am very excited for that, so I am working on that story, and hoping to get that done, and using this podcast to keep me uh, accountable, and to force me to do better, so that by the end of December, I can say, hey guys, I'm done, I'm on this level of the process, or this, that, and that, I don't want to be stagnant, and still be in a particular draft, when I want to move forward, I want to get this polished, I want to get this out there, um, yeah, so another thing that kind of shook me up, and got me out of my feeling so to speak is insecure uh if you guys are not aware the fifth season of insecure the final season has been airing it just the first episode was last week um in that Issa d the character Issa ray plays went back to stanford with her group of friends molly Derek, tiffany and kelly Issa having a new business, um, like an event planning business, she threw that block party in season four, she is on a panel of other Stanford alum who are like entrepreneurs and they're imparting their wisdom onto other people for this homecoming weekend. That's the setup. Issa is very 
awkward in this scene as she is in the entire show. But this scene in particular really stood out to me because she, out of the four, four or five panelists, she was the one who either just didn't have it together or was honest about not having it together. Um, everyone else was a little bit more confident, maybe a bit more charming, a bit more funny. And Issa was like, I, I don't, I don't have it together. There was a question posed to the panel from the moderator, and I don't remember it verbatim, but it was something to the effect of when did you know you made it, or how did you know, or what was the moment? And everyone gave these eloquent answers about all this and that. And Issa was like, I don't know. You... I don't know because there is a possibility that I could wake up tomorrow or five years from now and realize this was a big mistake and now I've wasted X amount of years. And though that was heavy and it was played for laughs to an extent, it w it hit me so hard because I feel like that is an honest fear that a lot of people have and it's not just with writing, it's even with career, with maybe getting married, with having kids. It's always the possibility, um, it's always that missed opportunity that what if and not to say you have to wallow in that but i think if we're more honest about having those feelings it'll make things a little better and it feels so generic and so cliche and cheesy but i i wholeheartedly believe in that because everyone doesn't have it together all the time and those other panelists may have very well been top of the line great but then there's also places where they could be lacking that if their stories were ex explored a bit more you would see their shortcomings um, but I do like her being in contrast to the other panelists and it being a honest truthful painful shit show um yeah so it just had me looking at my own shit like you know you have this deadline you have this goal you're trying to reach things may not work out the way you want them to you can't beat yourself up because honestly the more that you work on your thing be it writing be it going back to school be it braiding hair learning a new language getting a new job the more you work at it even if it takes you let's say a year longer than average once you've made it you've made it you're there so though i am still kind of sort of beating myself up about this deadline once I'm done with this book, be it by December 2021 or by April 2022, once it's done, it's done. And all the time and effort I put into it, I could still be upset about the timeline, but the fact of the matter is the project is done. You keep braiding that hair, you keep practicing, you're going to be a professional in no time. You keep going to school, going to your classes, not um, failing out, you're going to get that degree or whatever in no time. So it's just like, ah, I'm, I'm really trying to self-reflect a little more and give myself the same grace that I'm going to, that I give my friends and that I give strangers on the internet who I consume their media or even just random strangers who I don't even know. You know, I'm the type where if you post, you know, hey, y'all, I'm, I'm two years sober, I'm putting congratulations, balloons, and gifts and everything under there. And it's like, if I can extend that grace to a, a random person I have never met a day in my life, why not do the same for myself? And so that is where I am, and that's what I want to leave us with with this episode, is that though... You may be behind with Preptober. You may be a little bit behind with your book. You may be behind in the planning stage. You might not even know what the hell you want to write about. Take a moment to give yourself some grace. Relax, take a breath, look inward, and think of yourself as a stranger. If you're treating strangers with more care and consideration than you do yourself, then fix that. Work on that first. So I do plan on getting this book out. It is very important from to me, um, and I'm I'm hoping to get it out soon. I'm really I'm hoping to get it out soon. So please be, be more kind to yourself. Be more kind. So let's get into what am I reading now? Reading currently reading. Well, I finished up the other black girl um some time ago, and I have opinions. I have thoughts. Maybe I'll do a I don't know a very special review discussion episode i don't know um i have thoughts it ended interestingly enough um 
yeah, I finished that. I have thoughts. We'll get to that maybe in a future episode. But what I'm reading currently, whoo, I am reading Seven Days in June. This is a novel by Tia Williams. Um, ooh, okay. So, <clears throat> Seven Days to Fall in Love, 15 Years to Forget and seven days to get it all back again. From the author of The Perfect Fine, this is a witty, romantic, and sexy as hell new novel of two writers and their second chance at love. Brooklynite, Eva Mercy, is a single mom and best-selling erotica novel. Novelist, writer? I don't know. <laughs> Who is feeling press from all sides. Shane Hall is a reclusive, enigmatic, award-winning literary author who, to everyone's surprise, shows up in New York. When Shane and Eva meet unexpectedly at a literary event, sparks fly, raising not only their past, buried traumas, but the eyebrows of New York's black literati. What no one knows is that 20 years earlier, Teenage Eva and Shane spent one crazy, torrid week madly in love. They may be pretending that everything is fine now, but they can't deny their chemistry or the fact that they've been secretly writing each other in their books ever since. Over the next seven days in the middle of a steamy Brooklyn summer, Eva and Shane reconnect, but Eva's not sure how she can trust the man who broke her heart, and she needs to get him out of New York so that her life can return to normal. But before Shane disappears again, there are a few questions she needs answered. With his keen observations of black life and the condition of modern motherhood, as well as the consequences of a motherlessness, Seven Days in June is by turns humorous, warm, and deeply sensual. Fam! This book was given to me by my good friend JJ. She um, made sure that I had a copy for my birthday. And it took me a while to get to the book, not because it wasn't good, but because the beginning, it's not that the beginning, that first chapter wasn't good. I just could not focus. So what I did was I downloaded the audio book and I listened to the first part, which got me into the book. Because I guess hearing someone read it to me, for whatever reason, felt a little bit better than me reading those words. After that first chapter, maybe a little bit of the second, I started reading. Ah, that was it. This book is so freaking, it was like tailor-made for me. Um, the references, uh, the the other characters that weren't even included in the s description of the novel, uh, the daughter, the flashbacks, the romance, the drama. This is really a good book and I'm enjoying it. I'm about a little over halfway done and this came right on time. Reading this book, listening to the beginning, reading it for myself, taking it all in and having it be different from the book that I'm writing for Nano has kind of given me this reinvigorated drive, motivation to finish my own stuff i'm having such a fun time reading this and i haven't had that feeling in a while and it's not that i've hated every book i've read before this that's not the case but i'm having a good time and then with the two main characters the love being between two authors it feels so real and so again tailor-made for me um I don't know, Eva and Shane, they are something else. And I am very excited to see where this ride goes. Um, I'm not going to rate it, but I would say if you like romance, if you like a little slow burn, you like a second chance story, then read it. This is good. This is good. Um, I am one who, when I consume written works even comic books i'm always looking at the live action so like casting who could play who um what scenes i could see played out in person uh, me and jj were discussing a particular literary event that happens in the book i won't spoil too much but it was good to say the least and so 
I don't know, y'all. That's my recommendation. Like, if you guys have any recommendations for me, books you think I would enjoy, maybe that I should read, let me know. Hit me up. Uh, email readingwritingrain at gmail.com. You can even do it on Twitter, Coleman Rain, or even on Instagram, Reading Writing Rain. But for me, I think this is a book that so far I think everyone should read. Now, I assume we're all adults or at the very least mature enough uh, for the content. There is... Well, yeah, but there's sexual content in the book, and then there is also um, some drugs as well. Like, like in there enough to like cause concern if you just do not like that type of content, but like not enough that from page one to four hundred, it's like, and they did coke, and then they did speed, and then they did you know, I don't know, whatever. It's not that type of book, but. Yeah, I recommend it. I think you all should give it a read. And I think I'll go over the good reads and like add it and do a review or something because I really enjoyed that. Tia Williams was in her bag. She sure the heck was. So this has been episode four of Reading, Writing, Rain. Make sure to use the hashtag RWRPod when you're live tweeting, when you have comments, concerns, questions, and whatnot. Um, or you can use the full like spelled out Reading, Writing, Rain, which that would take up a lot of space. I'm not sure why you do that, but by all means, go ahead. Um, email, uh, reading, writing, rain at gmail.com. Let me know your thoughts, you know, ideas, concerns, questions, books. You maybe want me to read, uh, maybe, I don't know, something, whatever you got for me. I'm trying to give you guys a lot of ways to get in touch with me if need be. And, what da, 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 uh that's pretty much it yeah so thank you guys for joining me on this ride i'm going to uh try to do a little bit better with uploads and whatnot and you know again let this podcast hold me accountable for the works that i'm trying to complete in the future and i hope you guys will do that as well let's make this a buddy system you listen and you maybe hold yourself accountable or you listen and you ask me hey you know, I hope everything's going okay over there with that word count. <laughs> so, um, thanks, guys. And until next time, read something, write something, and then come back and tell me. Rain. <laughs> All right.